What you doing here? We heard you was sparking a new school teacher. We figured we'd come over and take a look. Uh, though maybe you were thinking about going to school. <laughs> <laughs> you know we don't hold with no book learning. We're gonna be hog farmers, just like Pa. is dismissed. It is such a lovely day for horseback riding, and you are so thoughtful to suggest it. It's my pleasure, Miss Pettigrew. Abby. Class is dismissed. <laughs> Talk like that in front of his lover, get a swell head. Joe, do you think I could ride him? Oh, sure, why not? He's real gentle with ladies. What's your fault? Mm. What's the matter? Ow. Ooh, it's Easy. my ankle. And a swell. I think it's broke. No, no, no. We'll hear no more of that. Mr. Cartwright, I just can't stay here as a long-term house guest. Now, you can't stay at your own place with a broken ankle, can you? No. You're the best thing that's happened around here in a long time, Peach. <laughs> you might even get to like us. Yes. Thank you, Candy. Well? Uh, no luck. I thought I could get Mrs. Ferguson. She was a pretty good substitute teacher, but she can't quit her job at the millinery store. Uh, but it'll be easy enough to find somebody. No big deal teaching school. I got an idea, Joe. Yeah, what's that? Well, says it's no big deal. Why don't you do it? Why don't I do what? Well, teach school for a couple of weeks. Oh, come on. I'm... What, are you, what are you looking at me like that for? I was just thinking, Miss Pettigrew, how do you think Joseph would make out as a teacher? Well, he says it would be easy enough. I think he'd make a fine teacher. Well, I think he'd make a great teacher. You know, as a matter of fact, I would. I'd make, uh, I'd make a great teacher. I, I just have a lot of work to do here. That's, all. That's no problem. I'll do the work for you. I'll do my work myself. Thanks. Joseph, every man, married or single, owes something to the children of his community. Now, what have you done for the children of your community? Well, I, nothing. I was... Absolutely nothing, Joseph. Now, don't you think it's about time you assumed some responsibility? I'm willing to do my share, but, I, but I'm not going to teach school. <laughs> now, look, I'm not kidding you. I am not going to teach school and oh No, that's it. I don't, don't want to do it.
think of our new teacher, Billy? He looks kind of natural, don't he? Mm-hmm. What are you two wondering? Well, uh, me and Billy, uh, we was thinking about how Miss Pettigrew always wanted us to come to school. We thought we'd come over and enroll. You two want to enroll? Sure, why not? We as good as anybody, ain't we? Don't sit on the desk. Do you want to go to school? Take a seat. Uh, any place in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, right up front where I can keep an eye on you. Right here. Anything you say, Joe. And from now on, the name is Mr. Cartwright. Oh, M Mr. Cartwright. Mm -hmm. you, you hear that, Mr. McNabb? I mean, from, from now on, Joe ain't Joe. Joe is Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Take off your hat. Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Show some respect. <sighs> Kathy? Kathy? What's the matter with her? She's scared, Mr. Cartwright. Scared of what? She never had a man teacher before. Kathy? Kathy, honey, you're not scared of me, are you? Oh, now, how can that be? Why, after all the times I've taken you on rides and you went over to your house to see your pa? Now, you can't be afraid of me. Let me see a little bit of a smile. Okay, that's better. Hey, all you... All you kids. No, I, I accidentally made Miss Pettigrew hurt her leg, so I'm gonna have to be your teacher for a little while. I don't know too much about being a teacher, so it's gonna be up to you to help me. Now, will you help me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, good. How about you show me where you sit, huh? Where's your seat, Kathy? Oh, yes. There you go, honey. Um, my desk's over there, Mr. Cartwright. Go sit down, Mary. <laughs> All right, erase it, Willie. Why me, Joe? The name's Mr. Cartwright. I said erase it. If you say so. Or race it, Billy. Here, Willie. Not you, Billy, you. You know, uh, you really shouldn't get all fretted up, Mr. Cartwright. My pa, he always says, uh, man, get fretted up, he's just gonna wear himself out. That's right. Man getting fretted so early in the morning, Mr. Cartwright. Gonna be plump turkey out before the day's over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think we had enough school for one day, don't you, Billy? Yeah. See you tomorrow, Mr. Kyra. And then Chicken Little said... Th uh, uh, then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. Yeah, yes, Kathy? That's not the way Miss Pettigrew said it. She did it with different animal sounds. Well, that, that, that was Miss Pettigrew. You don't expect me to do it that way, do you? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, you do. Well, all right, I'll, I'll try. And then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I must go and tell the king. <laughs> Children, I, I, th I think I'll find another story to read, all right? We got a much better one for you. <laughs> Chicken Little! Chicken Little! This guy is falling. Oh, this guy is falling on my head. Oh, mercy. You stay right here. I'm gonna go tell the king. Mark, 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 mark. 
Hey, get back inside. Quick. Quick. The cat is coming. The cat is coming. Ah! Ah! Where you boys been? I ain't seen you since sunup. We've been at school, Paul. You know, Joe Cartwright, he's uh, taking over for Miss Pettigrew now that she's uh, laid up, and we've just kind of been pestering him. This, uh, Miss Pettigrew, she ain't got you boys hankering to go to school, has she? <laughs> Us, Pa? What do we do at school? Well, there's them that values it. It looks to me like we got everything right here we're ever going to need. That's right, Pa. Well, get out and get your chores done. It's getting late. Right, Pa. Right. Hey, Joe. Joe, you hear the news? Huh? Chicken Little just came by. The uh, sky falls off till next Thursday. Hmm. <laughs> Abby. Yeah, you met my friend, Chicken Little? <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, nothing. He thinks he's funny. How did your first day go? Any problems? Well, the McNabb boy showed up, if you consider that a problem. Joe, that's wonderful. I have been trying to get them to enroll for the past year, but their... Well, their father's been dead set against it. Yeah, well, he's been doing you a favor. Why did they cause you a lot of trouble? No, not too much. I didn't stay in school long enough. Joe, they need an education. And if you could just give them the special attention they need... Now, I'm not going to bend over backwards for the McNabb boys. If they come back to school, they'll get the same treatment the other kids get. And if they start fooling around again, they'll get something the other kids don't get. You surprised me. Why? I just didn't think you would admit the McNabb boys could get the better of you, that's all. No, I didn't say they could. I just said they better not try. But I think you have a lot to learn about being a teacher. Yeah, well, you got a lot to learn about the McNabb brothers. Bring you your reward. Try, try again. All that other folks can do, why with... Patience. Patience should not you. Only keep this rule in view. Try, try again. It's very good, Mary. It was very good, Mary. Thank you. So sit down. Uh, I think we've all been working real hard. You young folks, why don't you take a little rest, and the older ones can work on their arithmetic. Work on your arithmetic. Right. chilly in here, so could we put some more wood on the fire? It's very nice, Willie. Thank you. funny you're gonna look while you're splitting wood this afternoon. We're gonna need a cord. Oh, you 
see that? For a nice lady, you know a lot about playing cards. Well, I find a small knowledge of the science of mathematical probabilities to be great. Hey, Joe. Late today, huh? Yeah, and to keep a couple of little boys after school. They tired? Yeah. Joe, I hope you're not too tired to read me a story before you go to sleep. <laughs> Fine. I don't know, Pussycat's my favorite. Yeah, the figures. <laughs> Perhaps you're finding taking care of a bunch of kids, to use your words, is more difficult than you thought, Joe. Was it Willie and Billy that you kept in after school? Oh, yeah, it was, it was Willie and Billy. Because I'm not too worried. I figure in two or three days they'll stop coming to school. Well, that seems like a pity, Joe. Yeah, well, that's your opinion. Oh, I agreed to teach these kids, but I didn't say anything about raising Willie and Billy McNabb. Well, you know, teaching is only uh, part of a teacher's task. Concern for the boys' future welfare is the rest of it. Oh. Oh, for some reason, I thought that was their father's job. They need to look up to someone more than their father, Joe. You could be that someone. Oh, come on, will you, Abby? These kids don't give a darn about going to school. All they want to do is horse around. Well, maybe they're testing you. Maybe they want to make sure that you're worthy of their admiration. Oh, the admiration of Willie and Billy McNabb are the least of my worries. I just hope I can keep them from burning the school down. some problems on the board, and you just shout out the answers. Four. Three. <laughs> All righty. Two plus two. Four plus four. Three plus four. Two plus four. Four plus four. All right. All right. Yeah, Tommy, no problem? No, but I think you do. Look. What'd you do with the stove? Well, Mr. Carr, are you plumb suspicious? When school's over, I'm gonna check that stove, and if I find out somebody's been fooling around with it, that somebody's gonna be in a lot of trouble. We better get out of here, Mr. Carr. It's bad in here. You'll get out of here when I tell you to. Now go on and sit down. Sit down. that doing up a chimney, Mr. McNabb. All right. All right, you want to act like little boys, and that's just how I'm going to treat you. Now, which one of you wants to go first? Now, hold on, Joe. That ain't nothing to get in a sweat over. Just a little old smoke. I said, which one of you wants to go first? 
Well, now, Billy didn't have anything to do with that chimney. Why don't you just let him get on out of here? All right, Billy, get on home. I've done my share. I want to stay. Billy, you get. Now, look, Joe. You've been having yourself at times playing school teacher. That's fine. I've been going right along with you. But a tannin? No. no. I'll fight you. I'll fight you like a man and no hard feelings. Nobody gonna pants with me but my pal. All right, that's enough, Willie. I told you that's enough. I didn't want to hit him. He didn't give me any choice. I'm just sorry I let him get to me. Well, is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. I didn't hit him hard. His pride's hurt worse than anything. I don't think for sure he won't be back to school. I suppose that's best for both of us. Joe, that is where you're wrong. Look, you've accomplished something that I could never do. I'd like to know what that is. You got them to go to school. Now, regardless of their motives, it's a start. Now, that is the important thing. How well, important or not, it's too late. It's over. Joe, it's not over. You must talk to those boys. <sighs> Abby, look, if I couldn't get through to them before, I certainly am not going to be able to get through to them now. Joe, as a teacher... As a te You keep saying, as a teacher. I am not the teacher, Abby. You are. That's right. I am their teacher, and their future is my responsibility. Now it's your responsibility. Not anymore. Joe, for what it's worth, I think Abby's right. You know, I'd, I'd love to know why you two are getting so upset over the McNabs. Oh, and you're not. I did the best I could. And that's the end of it. Yeah, that's the end of it. You know, I seem to recall you being sent home from school on several occasions. I don't remember the teacher quitting on you. Well, that's right, and you didn't quit on me either. You set me straight, you sent me back to school. Now, why can't their father do the same thing? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Staying mighty close to home today, ain't you? Saturday, and we just ain't got nothing to do. Wouldn't have nothing to do with them bruises you keep trying to hide, would it? Oh, I seen them last night when you come sneaking in. Thank you. Billy, Willie, how you doing? 
I was wondering why you hadn't come by for a visit. Yeah. Seems the older I get, the closer I stay to home. Um, you ain't here because of something my boys have done, are you? Well, why? Did they say they'd done something? Well, they said they'd been funnying you some, and uh, last night Willie come home looking like he'd been in a fracas. Well, they, they have been fun of me a little bit, but I don't know anything about a fracas. You know anything about a fracas, Willie? Huh? I say you know anything about a fracas? No, I guess not. You boys go find yourself some chores. Me and Joe got some talking to do. Now then. Tell me what's on your mind, Joe. Well, first, I was wondering when you're going to butcher. We'd kind of like to have some of those ham's ears hanging in the smokehouse. It's going to be long now. Cold weather's coming. Me and the boys need some things. Yeah, boys need things. They've been complaining? No, no, nothing like that. Well, they better not complain. They got just about everything a hog farmer needs to have. What about an education? I hope that's why he is here. All right, that's why I'm here. I was hoping you'd tell him to go back to school. No, sir. I just don't see it that way. How do you see it? Well, it's a bunch of foolishness for a hog farmer. The boys are going to take over when I leave off. They got the house, the land, the stock. You, you keep saying hog farmer. I, I just don't see where it makes any difference what a man does for a living. He still needs an education. Yo, I don't want you putting any highfalutin ideas in them boys' heads. I came here hoping you'd put some highfalutin ideas in their heads. I can't read or write, and I get along good. So will they. I guess that's it, then. Be sure to let us know when you got those hands ready. I'll sure do it. So long, boys. Joe have to say. Said he wanted to buy hams. Mostly he just tried to get me to send you boys back to school. Didn't say anything about me. Was there some reason he should have said something about you? I guess not. Go on, tell him. Me and Joe, we locked horns yesterday. Yeah. Well, he whooped me pretty good. I figured as much. So I, I couldn't go back there now anyhow. Why not? Because I got my pride. Well, that kind of pride you don't need. I expect you was in the wrong. If you got to eat crow, eat crow. But you don't have to go back to school. I just can't see no sense in taking time off from your chores to learn something you don't need to know. Pa? You, you're dead set against us going to school, huh? I am, but I want to know how you feel about it. You want to go to school? No. No, I, I don't want to go. You want to go to school? No, I, I, I don't want to go either. Well, settle then. I don't hear no more about it. Willie? Yeah? How you figure Joe never told Paul about that ruckus you had? How do I know? Seems like that'd be the first thing a teacher would do. Why don't you just hush up? He ain't hardly like any man I ever knew before.
a real fine job. Well, I can't say doing it was easy. Pa says if a man's got to eat crow, he should go ahead and eat it. That the only reason you cleaned the place up? Look, you didn't tell Pa we had a fight. So I figure I owe you one. Kind of hoped you did it because you want to come back to school. We don't need any schooling, do we, Billy? Willie, I... I've been thinking. You know what Ma used to say. Hey, you just remember what Pa said. Yeah. I don't need no schooling to be a hog farmer. I don't like to go against your Pa, but I think he's wrong. I think you need schooling. I think a hog farmer can be a better hog farmer if he's got an education. Look, Joe. Mr. Cartwright. Just done made up our minds. We got a lot of chores to do. Now come on home. Now come on. Mr. Cartwright, this here is Ma's Bible. Before she died, she wrote something inside. I sure would appreciate it if you could read it to me. Willie? I guess it don't hurt none. My dear sons, I have so little to leave you, I must count each thing I have with care. I leave you with my love, with the hope it will warm and guide you through all the years to come. I leave you the brave plans I had for you, knowing that somehow you'll make them real. And I leave you this book, the word of God to light your way. Live by it. Live by it, and remember my love is with you always. Thank you, Mr. Carrack. I guess it's about time to start school, huh? Mr. Cartwright? Ring the bell for me, man. Sure, Mr. Cartwright. Remember that. Why? Why? Uh, now. N O W now. C. All right, that's enough. C's backwards. Let's turn it around. Is the Cat on the the mat. Mat. 
Willie. <laughs> Very good. Sit down. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? That's yeah, good. That's good. Billy, you're next. Go on. that word. What? What's that word? Now I lost count. Four and two is w six. Eight. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eight. Eleven. I thought so. He's just studying a little bit, Pa. I can read. So, I thought we agreed hog farmers didn't need no book learning. Joe Cartwright read us what Ma wrote in our Bible. And we thought she'd like it if we could get some learning. I, I could read it to you if you'd like, Pa. I memorized it by heart. Pa? Pa, Joe says a man is, is only half a man without any learning. so glad to be back. And we're all glad you're back. We've got a surprise for you, a little program plan. Everybody sit down. All right, Tommy, you can start. The Gettysburg Address by President Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot concentrate. Consecrate. Consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will... Well, good to see you. Come on in, sit down. I come from my boys. Well, I think you boys would like to stay in school. You two get on home, there's chores to do. No, Will. No, I'm gonna fight you on this. These boys need an education. Fight me, huh? Now, there's something I've been waiting to hear. 
Come on outside. No, wait a minute, Will. That's not what I meant when I said fight you. You told my boys that a man with no learning was only half a man. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'll be waiting for you outside. Children, this uh, will give me an opportunity to find out just how much you've learned since I've been away. out of the way, boys. I'll show him who's half a man. You're a man, Pa. You proved your point. But so is Joe. If you're gonna do any more fighting, you're gonna have to fight me and Billy. You boys fight me? No. Willie, I don't want you fighting your Pa. If schooling for me and Billy is worth Joe fighting for, I guess it's worth me and Billy fighting for, too. Again, you or again anybody. It's over. My Paul and Joe, Mr. Cartwright, are fine. Oh. Would it be okay if I went on with the reading? Please do, Willie. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that that 
cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.